If you have lots and lots of devices to connect to your home network, you may be wondering how many network switches can be connected to your router. There are several ethernet ports found on the back of your router, so could you have a switch connected to them all? I'll answer this question for you and more in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Home Network Geek, where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoy the video, it'd be great if you could drop it a like and also subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to turn on those notifications whilst you're there. Now let's jump straight into the video. The short answer is that in theory, you could connect an unlimited number of network switches to your router. So is the number of devices that you can connect to your home network also limitless? Unfortunately not, but to be honest, you're unlikely to get anywhere near close to the limit that's set by your router. It is your router's subnet that will define how many IP addresses it can assign, which is essentially the number of devices you can have connected. A standard router will have a subnet of 255.255.255.0 which means it can assign up to 254 IP addresses. So this means that the maximum number of devices that you can connect to your network is 254, which includes both wired and wireless devices. Now it is possible to widen the subnet to increase the maximum number of IP addresses that can be assigned to around 16 and a half million. Realistically though, you're never gonna have enough devices, all of which warrant an IP address that get anywhere close to this. And to be honest, even 254 IP addresses will be pushing it. Also, your average home router will likely start to struggle as it approaches having to allocate up to around 100 IP addresses. Even the most high-end commercial routers wouldn't single-handedly be able to handle 16 million IP addresses. Now, of course, it is interesting to know how many devices you could have connected to your home network, but my advice would be to not mess around with the subnet as 254 IP addresses is likely to be more than you'll ever need. So you may already know that it is physically possible to connect network switches with each other as a way of increasing the maximum number of ethernet ports available to you, but is it safe to do so? This process of connecting one switch with another is known as daisy chaining. On older switches, a particular cable, which is known as a crossover cable, is needed to connect them together. But the more modern switches will have a specialist port, which is known as an uplink port, which allows you to connect the switches with each other without needing a crossover cable. Now, depending on the types of switches you have, you could find that any of the ethernet ports can be used as the uplink port but what you'll commonly find on a managed switch is that it will have a dedicated uplink port. Daisy chaining switches together is considered to be safe, but generally not recommended. Doing so does come with some risks that can cause absolute mayhem on a network. If you absolutely have to daisy chain switches together, it's recommended that you don't connect more than three switches together. Now it is possible to get around this by using what is known as stackable switches. Stackable switches use a special type of cable connector which allows you to connect uh, several of them together, but instead of them appearing as individual switches, they all work together to act as a single switch. That being said, it's highly unlikely that you'll ever need a stackable switch in your own home network environment. But they can be considered a must have for corporate networks where they need to provide many, many connections all in a single area. The big risk that comes with daisy chaining switches is creating what's known as a loop. As the name suggests, a loop occurs when a network switch connects back into another network switch, creating a loop. When a loop is created, chaos can assume and the network can come grinding to a complete halt. Loops can be seen as the bane of any network engineer's lives especially when they can be easily avoided. In a corporate environment, the risk of creating a loop is much greater than us in our home networks. This is where companies will likely use managed switches for their ability to detect loops and quickly shut down individual ports if they're needed. Even though the risk for us at home is low, I would still recommend against daisy chaining your switches together. Realistically, you're unlikely to have enough devices in your home to even warrant daisy chaining. The only exception to this is if you have several network switches with fewer number of ports available on each. Now, should you find that the number of ports on your switches isn't enough, is it better to daisy chain your switches together or connect them to individual ports on the router? So I would recommend not daisy chaining them together for the reasons we've already discussed and instead connect each single switch to a single port on the router. Of course, an alternative to having multiple switches is to purchase a single switch that has more than enough ports than you think you'll need. Many switches these days will have up to 48 ports available, which for us at home is likely to be more than we'll ever need. Personally, instead of having multiple switches with fewer ports available, I would rather have a single switch with around 48 ports 
Now, I may not actually use them all, but it makes expanding in the future much easier without the need for additional hardware. This results in not having to daisy chain switches together and means that only one of the ethernet ports on the router is being consumed. So to wrap up the video, the number of switches you can connect to your router in theory is infinite through the process of daisy chaining, but this isn't recommended because of the risk of creating a loop and affecting your network. In regards to the direct connection to your router, you're only going to be limited by the number of ethernet ports found on the back of it. My recommendation would be to replace your multiple switches with a single switch that has maybe 32 or 48 ports available, which although they may not all be used, allows for future expansion. I'll leave links down in the description box below to some of my favorite network switches for you to check out if you're interested. Now, if you absolutely have to use multiple switches, I'd recommend you plug each of them into its own port on the router rather than daisy chaining them together. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. Whilst you're there, be sure to turn on notifications and check out some of my other videos. And finally, head on over to homenetworkgeek.com where I have an absolute ton of articles about everything home networking. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.